My name is Lovelace Daniel Sojik. I worked in uh, Sierra Leone and Liberia. In Sierra Leone, I worked for Ebola treatment center called Kerry Town. And in Liberia, I worked in two Ebola treatment units, Kakata Ebola treatment unit and uh, Bong Ebola treatment unit. I thought what was happening in West Africa could easily happen to my country. If you start asking who is going, then I said, yes, I am ready to go. And I wanted to go for my country. I wanted to go for my hospital. I wanted to go for my district to protect my own family, to protect my own country. We had to go and, and, and finish the fire wherever it was before it could explode to our side. I went to a time when the Ebola treatment center was just opened. Uh, there was shortage of staff, very few nurses. We had doctors, yes, but um, I was the only English-speaking uh, nurse. We had Cuban nurses as they were speaking uh, Spanish and we were speaking English and our patients were speaking Creole. So a big language barrier. Putting on personal protective equipments that were mainly plastic uh, was so much hot and so much suffocating. So it, it, it reached a time that we could fall down because you are suffocating, it's hot and the, the, the PPEs are so much hot and it's, the weather is hot and if you didn't take enough water then you will dehydrate and, and possibly collapse. So we had few cases of, 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 of uh, healthcare workers dropping in the red zone, in the, in, the, in the wards, in the Ebola wards. It was so much scaring. At the beginning, we were receiving patients at their last stage, and there was no much you could have done. That when you expect that this patient is going to die. But when you receive a patient in their early stage, you expect that there will be a good prognosis. There will be a good outcome of this patient. And unfortunately, the patients will run into hemorrhaging. They start bleeding, and you know that this is the last stage of the disease process. The patient is probably going to die. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing for a nurse or for a doctor to accept. And you just feel like you failed. So this is the time we needed psychosocial support to be told that, yes, you are doing a good job. Another difficult part was you go in, you take care of your patients, you are fully covered, your patient does not understand who you are. You see them, but they cannot see you. You are covered. They cannot identify you. There's an uh, uh, interpersonal relationship that is broken in between the nurse and the, doctor and the patient. And uh, not knowing who is taking care of you is very difficult for the patient because you don't know who is this. We used to write our names to identify ourselves, but uh, it was difficult for, for the patients to, to, to identify you. I would like to narrate this story to my children, my grandchildren, to everybody. I would like to narrate this to the young nurses coming up in the profession, uh, to the doctors, and to inspire people to be able to, to be ready to uh, volunteer in such, such difficult moment. And you cannot convince people if you don't have a story to tell. We need to document this and we need to learn from what, uh, what happened in West Africa for the future preparedness.